Hello, everybody, and welcome to the technically last Souls game on the list of things that we're going to be doing. Well, this one won't be co-op. I mentioned... Sorry. I was going to do this one regardless. And I have no... I. It would have been nice to do this co-op, of course, but at the same time, like, this is one of those games where you have to be able to remember and, and know, you know, what you're doing at all times. Well, I mean, you can get through it at a pretty, you know, at a pretty casual rate. But I, I feel like this is one of those games where if I'm going to do a co-op, I'd prefer everyone has, at the very least, a good amount of knowledge of what's going on in this game, because it has a relatively steep learning curve, and... Well, I mean, it's not that steep, but it's it's enough to where if you're not used to it, you know, you're going to die all the time. And of course, obviously people are going to say like, well, that's the fun of it is learning how to play the game. But yeah, but I'd rather people do that on their own and not have to feel pressured, you know, with me being around trying to get them to, you know, play the game, I guess you could say. Damn. Sekiro is great. It's a very good game. And... I don't know why I said that for, but, um... I mean, it is. It is a good game. The thing I, I mainly want to talk about is... Boss-wise, I don't plan on doing every boss. I don't necessarily have a preferred ending that I'm going to particularly pick. However, like, I mean, it doesn't really exactly matter which one, at the end of the day, of which one I go for. Because there are bosses between, you know, both endings. It's funny, Wolf, I don't know why, but for some reason he, he looks even old here. <laughs> I don't know why he looks like he's like five or eight and like 34 at the same time. But yeah, if I had to pick, I mean, I'll probably end up doing maybe the join Kuro route of things. Because like I said, I'm, as far as I'm aware, there's no real way to get every boss in one playthrough. So by doing that ending, we'll get one particular boss fight. Although if I do refuse Kuro, then I'll get, I think, like technically two more bosses to do. And then for like the Raging Demon thing, um, it's been so long since I fought him. Like, or I should say, it's been so long since I beat him that I might not even do that. I don't know. It, this, this whole playthrough is just going to be kind of a big giant up in the air thing. And like I said, this is one of the last Souls games that I technically plan on doing for the channel. And keyword being plan. And this will be, of course, a actual let's play. So we'll get, you know, of course, cutscenes. We'll get all that fun stuff. I'm going to treat it like I do pretty much any other let's play. Um, not like a co-op let's play where I just kind of dick around or whatever. Right? So, yeah. That's, that's the plan. For those that are... Well, okay, it's not technically a Souls game. But, I mean, it... it God damn it. it it's basically a Souls-like enough to where it's... For me, it's perfectly fine to say that, yeah, it's practically a Souls game at this point. So I think it should count. Look who it is. It's Inna. I haven't seen these cutscenes since the game basically came out. And I think this game came out 2021, right? Maybe. Uh, probably. I mean, yeah, I can always check. Or, no, 2019? Holy fuck. Is that, is that so? It was funny because when it came out, it won Game of the Year, and I thought to myself, like, this game isn't really Game of the Year worthy. Like, you know, I, it doesn't feel like it should be considered Game of the Year. Like, yeah, it was good. 
But back then, I didn't really care too much for it. I thought it was cool, but that's about it. I didn't, I didn't see it as like game of the year worthy. Of course, granted, my game of the year at the time was for 2019 was Bloodstained. So, you know, my opinions are well that. All right, um, no real reason to go back there just yet, but we can come back here later. And we can't sprint, but we can, however, jump. This game was one of the first that did, you know, introduce, at least in terms of the newer age of of Souls-like, it did introduce the a jumping mechanic and, of course, the parry mechanic. Well, not the parry mechanic, but the stamina mechanic and all that other stuff that we'll get to see later. I'm also playing this not natively on PS5, because I don't think it has a native PS5 at all. So it's going to be basically the same PS4 game as it was before. It would be nice if this game got re-released again. You know, for just the sake of, I guess, being ported over to, like, potentially better stuff. I mean, granted, it is on PC as well, so it's not that it doesn't have a chance like Bloodborne. Which, of course, Bloodborne, unfortunately, has... Oh, well, I got caught. Okay, that's the first that's ever happened <laughs> in a while. I probably, for this game, I'm, I think I'm just going to stick with, like, doing what I know best. Just playing the game how I do best. And uh, doing what I can. I'm not going to try too hard to pay too much attention to literally every single detail or talk to pretty much every NPC. As much as that would be great, I feel like for what it's worth... With the way that I am these days, I think it would be best if I did just play the game at a normal, you know, pace and not go too crazy with it. Yeah, um, obviously, as you saw there, there is a shimmy slash climbing mechanic this game has. Sekiro introduced a lot of different particular mechanics that not necessarily got ported into Elden Ring, but, you know, there's a few things here and there that you could say that kind of showed up in Elden Ring, and by that I mean mainly just the jump mechanic. <laughs> Poor Kuro. <laughs> he just wants to be friends, but he pretty much can't. Can't to that extent. It will always be, you know, servant lord. But these two, pretty much. I'm not gonna lie, I don't exactly remember why Kuro was in charge of Wolf, to be fair. And here we go, we get the one technical singular weapon that we get. Uh, well, I say singular weapon. There's technically different weapons. But they're not the same way that, like, Souls weapons work. Alright, so right now what we gotta do is we gotta talk to, of course, Wolf. I mean, Kuro, sorry. Which, he will give us a healing gourd. This is gonna be our healing item. It is essentially a healing Estus, or, you know, Estus flask and all that from other Souls. And, of course, it does, you know, replenish upon death. Well, f revive full death. Not rev God damn it. Um, I forgot exactly. Uh, who cares? I forget exactly if this affects anything. I want to say probably not. Um, sure, why not? All right, whatever you say. I'll just like I said. I'll kind of do what I I can. I think the ending, realistically, is only affected by the last choice give or take, or at least a last choice. Up here, this is a healing pellet. It's essentially your healing grass from, like, demon souls, and I guess to an extent... Oh, my bad. Now here's our equipment, here's our inventory. Sure, I'll just use it in the inventory, I guess. <laughs> uh, quick items... And Homeward Idol is pretty much a thing that sends you back to, like, you know, your last... Your last Buddha statue that you pretty much revived that. Basically a bonfire situation. Alright. Now it's time for the real combat. So, 
Another thing that I guess you could say Elden Ring kind of took from Sekiro is the fact that there is a stealth mechanic in this game. And stealth, you know, is a big part of this game. But something that's particularly... Well, mostly made for Sekiro is the whole death blow. So death blow pretty much works in a way where if you completely deplete an enemy's health, not as well, yeah, even yeah, their health technically too, yeah. If you completely de deplete like their stamina and such, or like this, you know, you'll be able to pretty much get a free killing blow. And bosses typically have a system in which... Hold on, I forgot how to do all this. It's been a while, so it's up to heal. Okay. Shit. I wasn't supposed to get hit there. <laughs> I'm not supposed to get hit at all. Yeah, I'm just kind of a little distracted. But a death blow is pretty much a permanent, like... Yeah, you're gonna get killed. But sometimes bosses have more than one ability to die. And technically, Wolf... Not Sekiro, but Wolf... Has... Multiple ways to die, and that's why the whole Shadows Die Twice thing kind of comes into play. Because... Oop. Sorry, it's been a bit since I played. Luckily, the stamina mechanic and the parry system mechanic in this game is relatively really nice and really lenient. Basically, you have to parry pretty much just about before they technically attack you. Alright, I think this guy drops something besides a pellet, right? No? Okay, well, we got to kill a mini-boss, so I guess that's kind of cool. Uh, Ash is, I think, like a distraction thing, if I remember correctly. Like a rock, like a pellet, where you throw it, or a pebble, sorry. If I remember correctly, I think that's how it works. Anyway, so yeah, um... Like I said, you know, Wolf gets multiple revives, but you'll see that later. When we get to that mechanic much later on. Also, if I remember correctly, I don't think this game has fall damage that I remember. At least it shouldn't. Alright. So now we blow the whistle, wait for Kuro to show up, and then we get to move on to our first true boss fight. With none other than, of course... Genichiro, who is going to be the Virgil of the game, so get excited for that one. And I will try my best to beat his ass the way that I know how. It's good practice to kind of just, you know, beat him up and see what I can do. See how well I can do. Um, it would be nice to be able to have my healing gourd back, just in the off chance, but then again, if I get hit, you know. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> yeah, Wolf doesn't really care, as long as, you know, Kuro basically tells him what to do. He's, like, pretty much satisfied. And don't worry, Kuro's not a bad kid. Just an unfortunate situation of him being stuck with you know, Shinobi that a little too loyal, I guess you could say. Honestly, it would be nice to one day see a Sekiro 2. I mean, I'm fine with what we have now, but I, I kind of wish we had just a bit more. Because getting rid of this entire parry mechanic system just feels like... It just feels illegal, you know? It's like, man, you had this really good... Really good mechanic. And you just kind of take it away. <laughs> and that sucks. It would be so nice to see it. I mean, granted, again, Elder Ring did take a few things, like the whole crouch... Stealth mechanic, they took away uh, jumping mechanic. Oh, it's been a bit. So, when you have stamina on your on that bottom bar there, basically you want to make it to where, well, obviously that you don't have it. 
taking damage will make it harder to get rid of stamina. Uh, you can get rid of stamina by pretty much, you know, holding block. However, if you have less health, you're gonna be you're gonna be eating shit. Nice. Like I said, I'll try my best here to do what I can. Ugh, fuck! I always forget he does that stab right after. Fuck me! Oh well. Either way, even if you do win this, the cutscene is pretty much about the same. Somebody randomly out of nowhere throws like a throwing knife at, at Wolf, distracting Wolf, and making it to where Kenitro wins the fight. Pretty much dishonorably, but, you know, whatever. It's fine. This pretty much just means nothing besides just story progression, so it's not a big deal. But I, w I would have liked to be able to learn my parries, at, you know, once again. But we'll, we'll get better at it. It's been a bit since I played, so I'll get better at it. And I have to try to, like, explain what's going on. But just to go over the stamina a little bit, both you and enemies have a stamina bar. Now, stamina doesn't work the same way that, you know, like, Souls does, where, like, you'll run out of, like, running. You can infinitely run. You could infinitely attack, all that stuff. Stamina bar basically works in the way if you're not parrying, if you're not perfect parrying, I should say, um, it will build up. If you're blocking, it will build up. And whenever it builds up fully, you'll basically just get a guard break. And in most cases, like you saw earlier, with certain enemies, like once their health is d depleted or even guard broken, you can get a, a free kill. The game has a really high risk-reward system, and it's an amazing game because of that. I'm gonna do something real quick. Ah, I fucked up. <laughs> I was gonna see if I could try to screenshot right then and there, so I can just have that as my screenshot. Also, when this game was being announced, I, I honestly genuinely thought we were getting a... Bloodborne 2. I saw that arm thing, and I'm like, yeah, that's Bloodborne 2. Like, there's no way. Little did I know that we're going to get a completely different game that would actually end up being one of my favorites of this franchise. <clears throat> Alright, um... I think we can basically just talk to him for a bit. This is our... our uh, pretty much our Andre of the game. For those that are more familiar with Dark Souls, pretty much this is our guy that builds up our stuff. And now that we have a prosthetic, we can use it to do prosthetic things. And this is where the whole new weapons system kind of comes into play, because there technically are weapons that you can fit inside your prosthetic. Now, granted, it's not exactly the same as an actual weapon, weapon, quote-unquote. But, you know. Yeah. Something else that I should admit, uh, talk about is... Hold on, I think that's about it. Alright. He's basically talking about Anna. I think. Or, no, he might be talking about... This guy. Oh yeah, there technically was a sort of DLC. I think. Maybe not exactly DLC, but there is a thing where... There's, like, costume changes in the game I think you can do. I don't remember exactly how to get them or what they really wore, but still. Alright, so this guy right here is going to be your training dummy. He has the ability to pretty much just never die. Oh, okay. I think that's, like, if you miss something, if you miss some money and you die or whatever. I, I don't remember exactly how that mechanic works. Yeah, don't worry. He's not a bad guy. Yeah, pretty much just... If you're wanting to learn how to play the game just a bit better... Then you could pretty much just... You know... Train. I mean... I don't know what else there is to really talk about this. I have no need for it, to be honest, but if you want to learn how the game's mechanics work, that's a pretty good way of doing it. Coming back here to the temple, uh, 
Yeah, you don't. You, you, he puts a sword away near the temple, which you know is good. Um, respectful. Light coin purse. This is pretty much just your carried on souls kind of. Um, this game doesn't really have the exact same type of leveling system that regular other games do. So, yeah. <laughs> you don't really use souls to level up necessarily, but you do get XP. And I'll show that off when we get the chance. And money is mostly used to, like, buy things. And as far as I know, I think when you do die, you might lose some money. It's been a bit. I know you lose XP. So we'll have to be a bit careful. I'm going to check this place out just a little bit. Make sure there's nothing up there that I need to worry about. And, alright. We're finally into the game. We can finally technically truly play the game for what the game wants me to play. There's our first sculptor. Uh, this is our second one. And, yeah, it's a little close, obviously, but it's nice having it here, I guess. Yeah, R2 is um, your prosthetics, which we don't have. That's a item that helps you raise defense for a certain period of time, temporarily. Um, another thing is, so with stealth, a big part of this game is going with stealth. You want to actively try to be stealthy. You don't have to, of course. You can play the same way that I do, where I just kind of jump around and attack enemies whenever I feel like it. And just get kills whenever they come about. You can also do a leaping attack where you can get a free, easy, relatively nice stealth stab. Holding square is the ability to suck in money whenever you kill enemies. And you can also hold square while you're picking up money to essentially be able to pick up items in the same vicinity. Well, they don't fly to you unless an enemy drops it, but you can do this. You just hold square sometimes and you can, you know, pick up these things. All right. Ah, who cares? Yeah, I gotta remember to actually roll. So, whenever you take damage, <coughs> it does build up your stamina bar. The lower health you have, the harder it is to get your stamina bar back to basically normal. There you go. So the parry timing is a lot easier than, say, like a game like Lives of P, which clearly has a much more difficult parry time window. If, you know, people have played that, which I've played it, a while ago, I bought it again. Well, I didn't really buy it again. I bought it for the first time. Technically, I played it on Game Pass first. And uh, I enjoy it. I very much so do, but it's definitely clearly a lot harder than some other games tend to kind of be. Which is fine. But this game is relatively pretty easy and really lenient with the parry times. I'm so sorry about my, my voice. I've been, you know... Practically talking for who knows how long now. I've been doing so many goddamn videos and so many Let's Plays that my shit's just going out. So <laughs> This is one of those Let's Plays I've wanted to do for a while, and I'm ready to have a lot of fun doing it. Time-wise, I might just do 45-minute videos, probably, give or take. Technically, it'd be probably easier just to do longer videos than that, but still. Um... Also in the off chance. Sure can wheel. Nice. Yeah, this is a shinobi tool. You basically gotta go back to your little friendo. And he'll give you the ability to use these. This is another bonfire, again. Yes, I know it is quite close. Um, I don't think... If I remember correctly, going to a bonfire does not reset enemies. You have to, I think, rest in order for that to happen. So, Also, this game does... Even though it doesn't have a heart or an easy mode, as I'm sure some people would probably like it to have, which is kind of dumb. Even though this game doesn't have an easy mode, which I'm fine with, it does actually technically have a hard mode. But that's going to be coming up way later. Now, am I going to be using that mechanic? Probably not. <laughs> um, it's not that like, oh, I'm bad at Sekiro, like I can't just play it and get good at it or whatever. Nah, it's just more so that I think it would kind of probably get in the way. And it might be hard to the point where it might make things a bit more difficult. I'm fine with just doing normal. Yes, obviously I like my games on hard. Shit. <clears throat> so let me explain a few things about certain attacks. So, 
Oh, he was about to... Yeah, he was about to get rid of his stamina there. Or at least a good portion of it. Yeah, that's a grip! That is going to probably kill. Yeah, that, that killed. God damn it. Well, shit. Our first true death. <laughs> and funny enough, I don't think we have... Well, we're about to get it right now, actually. Pretty much, whenever you die in this game, you can revive. However, do be fair warned. That can also cause dragon rot, so be very careful with that. <coughs> Damn. Sorry. Dragon rot is a... Oh yeah, by the way, getting a death blow does kind of like decrease stamina just a bit. I should probably heal. That's the wrong button. I hit square to heal. You know what? Fuck it, yeah. I'm not giving up on this fight right now. I'm not... I'm trying to make myself look too pathetic here. Um, so, anyway. That right there is a... Unblockable move. Now, there are ways... To get around said block... Or unblockable moves. One of those ways... Which, for that move right there, is to jump... There, he's dead. He's not too bad, it's just I kind of fucked up a little bit. Prayer beads and gourd seeds. Okay, so prayer beads, if you get four of them, you basically get a max health upgrade. And gourd seeds, you go back to Anna at the temple and she'll level up basically your Estus flask. So we get technically, I think, stronger Estus, was it? Or was it more Estus chances, I think? That's one of the two. Whenever you do die and resurrect, you have to kill enemies with death blows and what have you to pretty much get your chance to revive back. Fuck, I am... I'm doing horrible today. If you can't get a parry, you could at the very least get a... block. Yeah, I kind of fucked this area up. Here I am like, yeah, it's probably best if I just, you know, let those guys do things on their own. Here I am just being complete dog shit at this game. <laughs> Showing how much of a professional I am. Well, I forgot he was here. Yeah, if you see gunmen, go for them. Just kill them. First, first sight of a gunman, you should probably try to kill. So anyway, back to talking about the parry mechanic. So yeah, like I said before, it is relatively a lot more lenient. You basically do it kind of before the strike hits, not like the split second before. It has a much nicer mechanic. Yeah, the unblockable moves um, eventually later on in the game, you will get the ability to kind of beat out unblockable moves. Uh, if they're going for a swipe, it's usually best just to kind of jump. But you can, I believe, perfect parry it, but I usually just don't. It's one of those few things that I, I tend to kind of not try too hard to beat out with parries. I just rely mostly on, like, my regular knowledge of I'm just going to hit things. Uh, that balloon basically makes it to where... I probably should not have pissed him off right now. It, it's nicer just to get a death blow on him. He's a annoying little turd. If you get caught, just go hide for a while and you'll be all right. See that little yellow arrow right there that's moving around? That's pretty much him. He knows that we're here, he just he doesn't know exactly where we're at. So we might be able to get a stealth kill. At least one. If not the whole thing. There you go. Got all that shit back. Good. So, also experience. Um, whenever you die, like fully die-die, not just like resurrect die, but fully die off, your experience bar will... I'll talk to her in a minute. Because you gotta talk to him first. Um, you'll lose all the experience that you are going to gain until the next level, but you can, you should be able to keep your levels until you, you know, of course you spend them on abilities and what have you. So she gives us, I think, a bell. I forgot exactly what this does, but... Protect them, okay... Oh, this is for the, yeah, this is for the quote-unquote secret level area. I got it. 
Yeah, I'll get it taken care of. Also, there is a merchant around here we gotta go go to and talk to. But I gotta get there first. Yeah, I just need to play this game like how I normally play and stop trying too hard to rely on explaining literally everything how Sekiro works is. I'm more like I I'm, I'm more than sure that people at this point probably know how everything goes. It's just again, if I had to do this co-op, it might be a lot harder to do it co-op because then I, you know, people would have to learn an entire new system that they're just not used to very or not used to yet. And it'd be a lot more difficult to do that. There he is. There's our merchant we're looking for. He sells fireworks for your prosthetic and you're going to need that. Let's go up here. And there we go. Grappling hook is awesome. Okay. Um, 500. Oh, god damn you. Alright, fine. I'll just go pop one myself. Yeah, this makes it to where, like, the more... Like, while it's active, you'll get more money. How much do I need again? That's not enough. I don't have enough at all. I have to go kill more guys. <laughs> I gotta go kill more guys. Um... Let's just respawn back. Let's just go rest of the Buddha statue real quick and try this again, I guess. By the way, mini bosses and bosses don't reappear. So once they're dead, they're dead. Just, again, like regular souls. Regular souls like games. They typically do that. So most of the ones. All right, enhanced physical attributes. I, I do have... Oh, yeah, we don't have enough, actually. <laughs> I thought that was talking about like the, the regular... Um, abilities that we can do. But that's not yet. Oh, that was a thing. I forgot about that. There's a sort of... If I remember correctly, kind of like a Suedo online system thing. It might not have even been an online thing. I, don't, I never really used it, so I don't remember exactly. I'm doing terribly. Yeah, dogs suck. Running slash is a good way to kill, it, um, kill dogs. Don't worry too much if you take, like, small amounts of damage. It's the big damage that you really want to worry about. And also, again, gun enemies. But once you know where they're at, you know, it's not a big deal. Like right here, for example. Get that stealth kill. And, yeah, of course these guys don't give us really a lot of money. Which sucks. But... I'll take any bit of money I can get, because I really would like to get my hands on that prosthetic. By the way, you can cancel into a block in this game. It's very nice. It's very nice having the ability to do that. I might not want to fight him exactly. Yeah, again, it's going to take me about a few hours, probably, give or take, to really get good at this game. Again. So, I apologize for being shit. Also, if an enemy does not heal, of course their health will stay low. And because their health is so low, even if they get their stamina back to normal, or back to just regular base level of not being, you know, close to getting guard broken, even then, still, um, say th same thing for you. If you get attacked, or if you're trying to block, your stamina will just build up higher. So, taking damage is a much worse scenario in this game than I feel like most basically are. You know what I mean? So, yeah, don't worry about... I mean, no, do worry about your health in this game and try to keep yourself from getting hit as much as possible. And this is where the whole Sekiro's combat kind of... You know, it's parry system combat kind of plays into into things. I'm doing terribly right now. The thing is, too, there's so many places to go check, so many things to show off. It's just... It's a damn nightmare doing everything. <laughs> so, again, I probably won't do literally everything. I might forget a few things here and there, so... Might not show off every item. Boom. This game is a rhythm game, pretty much, at the same time. Like, not only getting the rhythm of enemy patterns, but at the same time, getting your own rhythm of, like, your blocking, parries, the sound effects, everything together. It's just, it's so mesmerizing. I forgot this was down here. 
You can also crouch into grass, and then when the screen, you know, kind of covers up a little bit, that's basically showing you, like, hey, you're... You're, you're hidden from sight. Uh, falling down does not necessarily kill you. It shouldn't. I think it just pops you back. Take a bit of damage. These things are just nice little grapple. They don't, like, they're grappling throwy thingies. Like, they'll shoot you across. Not necessarily uh, grapple to that point. Let's go ahead and get this statue ready. Not sure if the game is just going to give me the chance to finally upgrade myself, which I don't think it's going to. Probably not for a while. Um, which we don't really need it right now, anyway. Okay, yes, you do take fall damage. It's just been so long that I forgot, and I usually don't get hurt much. <laughs> no real reason to come this way, but why the hell not? Oops, I fell off. <laughs> it's fine. That was my bad. This game also has a double jump thing to it, but it's only on walls. So you just touch a wall, there you go. And then of course square is to grab on top of said wall. That's not good, I'm getting kind of scared there. Alley oop. I'm trying to remember exactly how to get to that one. Ah, here we go. That might be what's that might be the only thing over here. That iron stuff, that black gunpowder stuff, um, those are for, like, building prosthetics and upgrading prosthetics later on. This Mibu Possession Balloon, if I remember correctly, I think it's... I think it has a higher... Like, enemies have a higher chance of dropping. Like, you you put it on, enemies will drop stuff much faster. I should, probably should have put on the Golden Balloon when I get the chance. Just because I never really use them, so I think it'd make more sense if I just at least tried to. Alright, Leap of Faith. Yeah, aim in the general direction of where the grappling hook is, and you'll typically hit it. Grappling in this game is so much fun. Uh, coming back here, there's a merchant that sells information. However, of course, I don't think we have probably the money. And I don't remember exactly if, like, what he gives out of the information at all. He's broke, he wants money, there you go. Actually, this might give me... Yeah, this might give me a way to get into that. Yeah. Hmm. Looking for what now? Great, of course. I don't know if I have enough money for this. I do. Ah. So I gotta get to the Harada State and then fire shooting tube. All right. Technically, I don't think there's any point in me doing that, but you know why not? And every once in a while, you can see like these ghost things here. Emma, not Anna. I kept saying Anna like an idiot. All right. Um, I believe there is a achievement slash trophy for finding all those ghost things. There's no real inherent value in terms of, like, the actual game itself, but... Yeah, alright. Get a nice rest. Yes, the enemies do respawn, but that's fine. I don't mind right now. Because... I'll kill him. <laughs> Uh, there's a few more guys that are going to appear pretty soon. I'm going to check something real quick, just to see something. Okay. I, I don't know why I'm bothering checking around every nook and cranny for things. There's no reason for that to happen, but I'm doing it anyway. Just be on the safe side. There should be a guy right over here. Somewhere, I thought. Okay, it's up there. That he's at. Yep. Alright, real quick, let's just go ahead and eavesdrop on these guys. Sometimes, um, sometimes people will actually tell you things that are of, you know, inherent value toward, oh, well, you know, just, like, little tips and tricks. Also, guys that are covered in this, like, fur thing, you want to kill them first, normally. Those are the harder versions of 
the regular enemies. All right. Uh, fuck. Hang on. I think we need to go back. Actually, yeah. It might help if we did. Luckily, they keep, um, they keep all the important places in one little section, so that way you don't have to just keep scrolling through different things to find out which one's which. While we're here, let's do the Gourd Seed real quick. Talk to Enna for a while. She's pretty much talking about Ishin. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's Ishin that she's talking about. Alright. Here you go. I forgot that's what he was giving us. So good thing we said yes, we'll take it. <laughs> If I remember correctly, I think this basically makes it to where... Yeah, maximum uses. There it is. Maximum healing gourd uses increased. Alright, cool. Wait, mastered build? I don't think I have any more, so... Alright. Pretty much, yeah, talk to him about the bell thing. And he'll say, like, oh yeah, you know, go to that statue over there and it should work. Shinobi Asoteric Text. Alright, Shinobi Arts. I think that's where we can use our experience bars to get. Pretty much our souls, quote-unquote. But there's still technically a difference between money and, you know, like I said, souls before. Yep, here we go. La la la. Alright, Shinobi Tool Time. And I think one of the ones we'll get first is, like, Shuriken. I think he might give us Shuriken, but I don't exactly recall. However, the one we want right now is Firecracker. Yeah, he starts with, load, with Loaded Shuriken, but I want Firecracker. Oh, yeah, we could just switch between them. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, so Dragon Rot, basically every time you die... Um, like fully, it makes it to where characters like NPCs will eventually die themselves. Oh, here we go. Okay, so we can have two on at once. I forgot about that. How do you... How do you swap through them again? Triangle. That's what it was. It was triangle to swap through. I probably shouldn't do this right now. Honestly. But... Eh, we haven't even fought, like, the real first-ish boss boss. But this is going to teleport us to a place of, not like, well, I guess you could say a quote-unquote secret level, so to speak. Kind of doing this a little bit early, especially knowing that, you know, one of the boss fights here is considered one of the tougher Boss, boss fights of the game. However, I think we should just do this maybe some other time. Like, just go fight off maybe possibly the first main boss and then come back and deal with this. Just to kind of have a little bit of increased level going on. Or I could just try to suck it up and deal with it and do this anyway. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, before the very first boss, we'll go fight an optional one. However, I still kind of want to get back and deal with yeah, I'm not going to lie. I kind of want to go back and fight the ogre real quick. We'll come back. We'll go take down the ogre. And if you guys want, I could probably try to take down Butterfly. Yeah, all right. So um, we don't have spirit emblems to really use these effectively, but I believe that these guys should hopefully drop some. Yeah, thank goodness. All right. You need a certain amount to actually use it, and we have at least one, which is fine with me. I'll show you pretty much what they're used for. Alright, so Chained Ogre. Start hitting him. You have no stamina, so just start hitting him. Alright, here comes the fun part. That is a grab. And then whenever he goes for that grab, 
basically dodge back or just jump. Oh, shit. I could kill. You can also do this. Let me just heal up real quick. That was my bad. Pretty much the idea here is you don't want to get grabbed. Like, at all. If he's about to grab, jump. And when you do that, go for a grapple. And it'll kind of, like, put him in a small stun for a bit. You can also, of course, parry his attacks, but... That grab ain't gonna get parried. There is a move later on that you can learn whenever you grapple. Um, you'll have the ability to pretty much do a swipe after grappling. Alright. That's one death. And yes, you have to relock. It sucks. And yeah, usually big enemies that do that to you... Uh, are scary. Also hit R2, and then you can get some free hits. If you had the prosthetic going on. Yeah, try not to... Fuck me! God damn it. Oh well, he's... practically about dead anyway. I have no more healing items. Well, I mean, I do. <laughs> that was dumb. Yeah, also, if you wait long enough, uh, enemies will move backwards. When you're dead. Yeah, this is basically a free hit. If I die here, that's gonna suck. Yeah, please don't let me die here. Typically, when it comes to this game, you really want to kind of rely on... Mostly, um... You kind of want to rely mostly on the ability to get a kill kill, like a, a stamina kill, not necessarily a full-on deplete health bar kill. But anyway, um, let's see, skill-wise, I don't know if there's any... Oh! We need that. This is for this is for thrust attacks, but this is a very useful thing to have. Pretty much when an enemy goes for an unblockable thrust, you press circle toward them, and you can just stomp it out and they gain stamina, so it's really nice. Alright, anyway... That'll be it for this. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you all next time for some more Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. And of course, as always, take care, everybody.